working one day a week as the South African organizer. So I'm available one day a week to give some support to some of our struggles in addition to my own, in my own work. Um, one of the things that we've been trying to do is provide information about things that are happening in other countries and activism in other countries that can be useful in this context. So we did a publication on um, large dams and what happened with large dams elsewhere in the world and then in, in southern Africa. But one of the things I wanted to bring here was about fracking. Because we all know about the fracking struggle in the Karoo, but now fracking is um, being proposed and is being explored for all over KwaZulu Natal, the Berg on the Mozambican border. If you look at the map of South Africa, it's, it's basically all over. It'll be six out of eight provinces that get explored for, for fracking. So this is something really serious that if you don't know about, you know, it's shooting toxic chemicals into the, into, the, um, into the rock, into the earth, that then splits and pollutes the, the water and the groundwater, and there's, there's no way out. It's really an, an ugly business. So gas is a form of energy that is now becoming more and more popular. But some of the places, gas isn't a problem to access quite easily. But now they want to access gas um, that's hidden and stuck under the earth, under the rock. So to access that gas, you have to find a way to get in there. So the fracking is, stands for hydraulic <laughs> fracturing. And you shoot the, the water and the chemicals and what else? The sand. Huh, shoot hard, hard into the rock. And the rock splits and releases the gas. The gas is actually trapped in the rock, so it's not, I mean, it's literally fracturing it so that the gas yeah. comes out of these tiny little pockets which it, where, it's, where it's trapped in. So the, um, the process can go for kilometers and kilometers underground, and the, one of the concerns is that the <coughs> chemicals are coming through layers that include our aquifer. So the groundwater has the potential to be contaminated by the fracturing process. Um, and it's a very, um, um, we don't know very much about our groundwater, let's put it that way, and how reliant we are and how far it travels and the kinds of distances. Um, so it's a big, yeah, it's a big issue. And then also there's a lot of water that's needed to do the, um, to inject into these holes. So there's a huge amount of water that needs to go to for example, the Karoo is a very dry area, there isn't water available there to do the processing, so it's not clear where that water will come from. The photo that I saw, they had gone and done this in the 60s or the 70s, this was from Leanne, and, and the gas had, was in the water enough that years later, 20 years later, when they put a match near that borehole, it, it started fire, right there. Um, so I think that we don't really know what sort of impacts that it can, can have further. So they drill deep down underneath those layers and there they inject these chemicals which then expand. And in that expansion it cracks the rocks to release the gas, the small trapped bubbles of gas. But there's been a long debate about the industry saying no, but those chemicals will never leach through to the top again. But now it's been proven that it does. So it is, in fact, a very, 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 very dangerous thing for groundwater. Um, there's just a, and I spoke to an engineer who's, who's in the gas business, and he said they just recently discovered vast, vast gas fields off the northern uh, coast of, of, of Mozambique, in the northern Mozambique off the coast. Vast, vast, vast gas reserves. So that might, uh, well, unfortunately for those people in the north of Mozambique, of course, because there will be heavy industrialization, but it, it would, it, the gas in north of Mozambique is much, much cheaper to extract than to do it by fracking. Um, but of course, when the resource gets depleted, fracking will become a stronger option. And it's not only in the northern Karoo, it's also in Pumalanga and in KZN, where there's a, 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 lot, a lot of fracking potential. Uh, I, I just want to <coughs> explain something about the kind of rock that is potentially um, going to release this fossil gas. Um, coal 
is a sedimentary deposit. It is plant matter that has fossilized into coal. Crude oil, petroleum, is plant matter that has, over centuries, thousands and thousands of years, probably millions, converted into oil, crude oil, which we pump out of these deposits. And in the case of fracking, it's usually in shale. Shale, which is a substance that made from mud. And mud, if you think of mud millions of years ago being deposited in river beds and on ocean beds, it contained organic matter. There were living things. If not tiny microorganisms, then certainly sea, sea sort of uh, marine organisms, tiny shells, worms, all that sort of thing, which became part of the composition of the shale. And so one mustn't think of it as being like solid rock. These are layers, sedimentary layers, <coughs> what they call sedimentary stone as opposed to igneous rock, which contain the potential for gas. And what they're doing in some countries, they are actually minute seams of coal. Coal sometimes forms in really small seams. And it's necessary to pump those chemicals in to trigger a reaction so that that converts into gas. And then you get methane being released from those coal seams, tiny, tiny coal seams, sometimes only as thick as a pencil. And um, what, what I'd like to just also encourage people is please avoid using the expression natural gas when it comes to describing the gas that is released through the fracking process. It is not a natural gas. Natural gas is what happens when you eat too much baked beans. Um, um, that gas is a industrial gas as produced from an industrial process and it is based on what I like to think of as fossil uh, substances or fossil deposits that convert to gas under pressure. So we need to sort of be sure about what we're talking about because there's a lot of misinformation going around about fracking. And that's why if you look at the map that was put out recently, uh, I think it was Patrick's article, um, showing, oh, it was Tony Carney actually, Tony Carney uh, produced a map of South Africa with all the different lease areas where the government has given out concessions or plans to give concessions to companies to do exploration for fracking purposes. And you can see where it is. There's a very big one just to the north of us here on the Putaland Plain. And there are others in Pomalanga, in, along the Drakensberg, even in the Free State, and of course the big one in the Karoo. So it, it does affect a very large part of our country.